Thanks indeed for joining us on tonight's broadcast. I trust you're doing well. I'm Ethan Tashobia with my guest anchor right here, the Miss Rwanda 2022, Nshuti Muheto Divin. She'll be joining us later tonight uh, to tell us about her life, uh, her story, and her reign so far. You're watching our TV news live from Kigali, but first of all, you're doing great? Yeah, I'm doing good. You excited about tonight? Yeah, excited at the same time nervous. You'll be fine. Yes. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yes, uh, we have a lot to tell you tonight, but these are indeed our TV news live. We're coming to you live from Kigali. Now, let's kick it off tonight's bulletin. President Paul Kagame on Friday received credentials from nine dip new uh, diplomatic envoys accredited to Rwanda at Village Rugido in Kigali. The envoys included Kevin Colgan, Iran's ambassador to Rwanda, Katrina Zufa Lalandova, Slovak. Republic's ambassador to Rwanda, Andriy Pradenink, Ukraine's ambassador to Rwanda, now Canada's ambassador to Rwanda, Christoph Tonli, Isatu Amina Bundu, Israel's uh, Sida Rion's ambassador to Rwanda, Jasper Singh, ambassador of Singapore in Rwanda, Michelle Ian Upton, New Zealand's ambassador to Rwanda, Abdi Muhammad Ayyub, Djibouti's ambassador to Rwanda, and Monica de Griff Lindo, Colombia's ambassador to Rwanda. Now, while addressing the media shortly after presenting their credentials to President Kagame, the new envoys reiterated their commitments to further strengthen their respective countries' cooperation with Rwanda. Uh, we had a, a brief meeting. His Excellency was very gracious, uh, spent a, a bit of time with us. We discussed Canada-Rwanda relations. Uh, we looked forward to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Um, I uh, complimented uh, His Excellency on Rwanda's very impressive management um, of the pandemic and clearly their um, uh, entry into uh, the next phase outside of the pandemic and on all of the many successes that Rwanda has achieved in, in a number of years. And I look forward to uh, representing Canada and Rwanda and building our already strong relationship and looking forward to a bright future. Singapore highly values uh, our relationship with Rwanda uh, as a partner and as a friend and we tend to build on that good relationship we have to, to further our cooperation in various areas of interest to Rwanda like in cyber security, di digital processing, digital services, fintech, uh, agro-processing and so on. My priorities are to develop economic trade, cultural links with, with Rwanda over the next three or four years that, that I'm ambassador. Uh, it's important that countries benefit equally from one another's trade and, 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 and investments in, 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 in each other. Uh, we have a, an, an economic forum in, in Ireland that we will hope Rwanda will participate in uh, towards the end of June and that some uh, Rwandan business people will come to, to uh, Dublin. And, and tell the story of Rwanda. I transmitted uh, to His Excellency, President uh, Paul Kagame, the warm greetings uh, and uh, wishes for uh, good health, uh, well-being and prosperity uh, from his uh, counterpart and brother, His Excellency President Smail Omar Gilly of the Republic of Djibouti. Uh, as you know, uh, Djibouti and Rwanda are sharing uh, excellent uh, bilateral relations which can be qualified by friendship and familial bilateral uh, relations. We have uh, several uh, bilateral agreements. Some of them have been already implemented. And now it is to me to work hard with my uh, colleague, uh, Ambassador Hope, Ambassador of Rwanda in Ethiopia and Djibouti to resume the bilateral meetings as I hope that we are at the end of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, in order to strengthen and deepen our bilateral relations and uh, to reach a new height. The matters. President Paul Kagame on Friday led Rwandans in mourning the third president of Kenya, Mwai Kibaki, after he passed on now. Kibaki, 90 years old, died after 
a long illness coupled with long uh, old age, President Uhuru Kenyatta announced on Friday. Through his Twitter handle, President Kagame noted that, and I quote, my sincere condolences to the people of Kenya and to the family of President Kibaki. His dedication to the economic transformation of Kenya and his work towards his regional integration will be remembered for many generations. The people of Rwanda stand with Kenya during this difficult time. Now, Kibaki served as Kenya's third president from 2002 to April 2013. While announcing Kibaki's death, President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya said that his predecessor will forever be remembered as the gentleman of the Kenyan politics, a brilliant debater whose eloquence, wit, and charm won the day. President Kenyatta also declared a mourning period until Kibaki's burial with all flags flying at half mast. This very day, the Bank of Kigali commemorated, held a commemoration ceremony to remember its former employees that were slain during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi here in Rwanda. We have more of this report. The ceremony was held at the Kigali Genocide Memorial located at Jisozi, where those in attendance paid their respects at the graves of the more than a quarter of a million victims of the genocide against the Tutsi that are buried there. Delphine Nikuze lost her husband to the atrocities that almost destroyed the country back in 1994. Joseph was a very social person and a very hardworking man, which is why he got a job at Bank of Kigali and he excelled there as well. Nothing would stop him doing his job well. And even when it rained, I remember he would wear a heavy his coat and go to work. The bank's executives have stressed that remembering the genocide against the Tutsi and its victims is everybody's responsibility so that people like Joseph are never forgotten and younger generations working at Becker today learn from his work ethic. The bank of Kigali is now very big and we have employees working for us and we are born after genocide against Tutsi. That's why we must come here to this place that has a very history that we must all learn to bear so that these young people can learn of that history, how far the country has come so that we can all choose to continue building our country and denounce divisionism. This is not something a person is supposed to observe for just one day and instead they reflect on the day as they go to work and observe the importance of making the right choices, choose to be Rwandan, to be one and staff our country. The Bank of Kigali lost 15 employees during the genocide against the Tutsi. Now, still on the same matter, vulnerable genocide survivors in Nyamirambo sector have commended Sonara Insurance Company for supporting them to renovate their houses. We have this report. As part of the 28th commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi, the insurance company Sonargua remembered its more than 10 employees that were killed during the atrocities. The company also took the time to provide assistance to vulnerable genocide survivors. I was left with eight orphans and nine children of my own. This is like heaven for me because this is the first time anyone has provided me with sort of support. I'm very happy because we are now going to live in a nice place and what they have done for me is helping to fill the gap left by my decent relatives. We thank God for this and the people who have done it. We appreciate this and very happy. My house is full of cracks and I'm afraid that it might corrupt on my grandchildren and I. Now, thank God that will not happen. Executives at Sonargua explained why this year they chose to hold their commemoration at the genocide memorial in Nyamirambo. The reason we decided to come to this memorial at St. Andres because some of our employees were killed here 
and their names are on the monument. We, as an insurance company, also decided to provide support for genocide survivors in surrounding areas. In previous years, we had taken this initiative elsewhere, and this year we decided to come here. The company has pledged to continue supporting genocide survivors as they continue to rebuild their lives. In other stories, maize farmers in Chirehe district in the eastern province have been commanding the fact that Tubura program initiated and pioneered by One Acre Fund, an NGO that operates here in Rwanda, has been linking them directly to market and melting middlemen that have been exploiting them. Serge Nori reports. The maize farmers are now able to sell their produce in bulk and with transparency. <laughs> Making a living before was difficult because we were selling to middlemen who sometimes stole from us. This system of doing things helps us because, in my case, I am now able to get a lot of money at once and do things like pay for school fees, unlike before when I would sell just one sack at a time to the middlemen and end up wasting the little money I was getting. Tubura has been helping our agricultural activities to develop, loaning us things like fertilizers. They then buy our produce in bulk and pay us with no problems. We are now no longer exploited by the middlemen because the scales used by the project are standardized. Also, the middlemen would not exceed 230 to 240 Rwandan francs per kilo of maize we sold them, and the Tubura project pays us 275 Rwandan francs. The project is determined to help farmers to develop faster. We have been working with the farmers for a while now and they know of the benefits of using things like fertilizers and other modern farming practices because their harvests have increased significantly. Now we must ensure that they have a market for their maize and that is why we link them directly to such markets. They give us their maize and we pay good money for it and then take it to different clients. On average, the farmers get paid three days after giving us their maize. In 2018, the project was operating in all seven districts of the eastern province and two of the southern province, linking 2,923 farmers to markets and 3,126 tons of maize were sold. This year, One Acre Fund, Tubura, expects to link 6,378 maize farmers directly to markets and sell 6,378 tons of their produce. Thank you, Serge, for that report. Now, a number of citizens and residents of Kagarma village in Gatsi World District are pleased with the achievements they have re reached thanks to their participation in a crowdfunding activity organized specifically for their community. This initiative is aimed at promoting the courage of savings uh, to the best of their financial ability to better prepare for the future. Chilezi Precious has this report. It has been six years since the saving initiative through crowdfunding was started in Kagama village. A majority of the citizens that participated in the initiative in the beginning were aiming at affording basic health insurance, Mituel, and when their leaders realized their surplus after that had been taken care of, they decided that those funds should be used to further develop their community, as their village leader Paul Ayurgwanda broadly explains. <laughs> It was a pioneer of the saving initiative through crowdfunding for the last six years and I can say without a doubt that it has changed my way of life for the better. My pledge has been 8,000 million francs on a weekly basis for the last six years and I've been able to acquire land that is equivalent to 5 million million francs and I've also been able to afford mutual among other things. The citizens appreciate the leadership they are under for ensuring their participation in the initiative and can testify to its efficiency. 
The crowdfunding section I participated in had the objective of getting mattresses for each of us, and after that was obtained, we were also able to afford health insurance, and to this day, the sections my fellow women and I were divided into is the primary source of our health insurance. Kagarama village has always been exemplary among the various communities in the district of Gatsiwa and has always been receptive to government-initiated programs. They have been rewarded for this by the government on several occasions, the most memorable one being the construction and initiation of an office space for the community inhabited by over 600 people, divided in sections of 110. They have described the process of saving through crowdfunding as something very beneficial that has yielded great results for the district of Gatiwa at large. The district of Gatiwa continues to urge their people to participate in the initiative despite not having pioneered the process. Aside from how this contributes to their development as a community, saving is beneficial on a personal level as well and is something that should be aspired to, as their vice mayor, Se Kanyanje Jean Leonard, mentioned. The saving initiative through crowdfunding has been very beneficial to the citizens, and I continue to urge those that haven't been part of it yet that it is not too late to start. Most of our employees have interacted with citizens and shown them how to make efficient use of the initiative. The saving initiative through crowdfunding is set up in sections to ensure the section one belongs to aligns with their income bracket and the pledges and their fulfillments are made on a weekly basis. Welcome back. You're still watching RTV News. My name is Divina Chutim Hueto, your guest anchor tonight. And in other stories making the headlines on the globe, India's Prime Minister says he has discussed the urgent need for a ceasefire in Ukraine with his British counterpart, Boris Johnson. The UK is encouraging India to loosen the economic and defense risks with Moscow. We have this report. Courtesy of Al Jazeera. East Rwanda 2022, ladies and gentlemen, is. Contestant number. Number 44. Contestant number 44. Shuti. Muheto Divina is Shuti Muheto Divina. Congratulations. Shuti Muheto Divina, Miss Rwanda 2022. Um, first of all, how are you dealing with the fame? Uh, okay, the fame is one thing that yeah. is good, yeah. but fame comes with a package. It comes with a lot, cyberbullying, negative comments, everyone trying to see what you're doing, if you're doing it great. So fame is good, but at the same time, it's something that comes with a package that I'm willing to embrace everything that comes with it. Hmm. Tough stuff. I know there's a lot of uh, cyberbullying, but I think you're strong indeed, like you told us. Yeah. Now, let's go back to that video that we just watched. Mm. Um, we want to go, I think it was on the, do you still remember the day it was? Yeah. Uh -huh. I would never forget that day. It was 19th March. 19th March. So it's slightly over a month that you've been crowned Miss Rwanda. Yeah. If you could tell us, uh, let's take you back to that particular date. Mm. Let's reflect on that. How was the day? Waking up in the boot camp. What was going through your mind? I yes. mean, it must have been a lot. Uh, firstly, that day was too long. It didn't. <laughs> It took forever to end. Yeah. So we woke up in the morning, we went, uh, we, we prepared ourselves. But before that night, we had prepared, I was, before going to sleep, yeah. I prayed to God, I was like, whatever happens tomorrow, give me that courage to accept whatever is going to come out of from, from there. So basically that day, I wake up, I went uh, to, the ba to, the, to the bathroom, yeah. I took a shower, and I was like, okay, this is the day, this is the final day, whatever is going to happen by the end of the day, it's going to, it's, that will be yours or it yeah. will not be yours. 
So I was willing and ready to accept that anything that would happen that day. Yeah. yeah. Did you at some point, uh, be, you know, see this crown coming your way? I didn't. I didn't at all. I mean, with all the praises and with all the social media buzz mm. and, um, and of course, you know what happened while dealing the auditions mm. and, uh, and one of the former Miss Rwanda saying mm. that you're so beautiful. You are actually beautiful. Thank you. Um, so did you at some point, when you went into the boot camp with the 20 finalists, uh, look at yourself and you're like, hmm, I stand the chance to win this crown here. I didn't. In fact, all that made me think I would not be Miss Randa. I was like, there is no way I'm going to be Miss Randa. So, yeah, for a fact, I had, I had accepted that I'm not going to be Miss Randa, and I was okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, now, um, I'm just, you know, going up and down. I, I, we also want to know who you are as a person. Mm. Uh, who is Moheto? Uh, growing up, what kind of family background? Where you come from? Yes. You want to know I Miss Randa? And, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, basically, Moheto. My name is Moheto Shoti Devin. I grew up in a family of four kids and um, the second born. Yeah. I have both parents, yeah. luckily. I still have both of them. And uh, I'm a cool person. People don't know Very this cool. cool person of me. So this the cool version of me. I'm a cool person. I like uh, music. Um, I love my family. I love my friends. I really appreciate them. So uh, basically, I'm someone who doesn't take anything for granted. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean by cool? Uh, do you like, wear cool jeans and go <laughs> bouncing around? What uh, kind of cool are you talking about? The coolness I'm trying to mean here is uh, I reflect in any situation that comes, yes. That's great. Yeah. So now, uh, growing up in that kind of background, um, was it like a dream to be a Miss Rwanda or something that actually came up? And you're like, you know what, I want to go in that direction at some point. Yes, uh, so when I grew up, I would see Miss Rwanda. I, was, I would like um, say one day I want to be Miss Rwanda, but at the same time, I would hesitate. Yeah. I would fear to, 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 to put that step or to step out and speak. So I was like, uh, I would always see them on the stage and I was yeah. like, oh, I can't manage. I can't do that, that yeah. is not for me. So that always uh, pushed me and that always forced me to not go to Miss Rwanda. Yeah. But uh, when, I get, when I go to try it, when yeah. I go to move out of my comfort zone, yeah, boom, I miss Rwanda. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. So um, do you, with all the cyberbullying that you're telling me and all that you've gone through, uh, probably the good and the bad, mm. if you, someone took you back a year ago, would you consider doing the Miss Rwanda again? If someone took me back <laughs> yeah. a year ago, I don't think I would do Miss Rwanda again. Why? The thing is, I might go back and do something in a way that I didn't do it this year. Yeah. So that means I wouldn't turn out as Miss Randa. Since I'm Miss Randa, I wouldn't go back. If I was not Miss Randa, I would be willing to go back. Now, that actually brings me to my uh, next question. Mm. There's a lot of controversy surrounding uh, Miss Randa, on social media particularly, mm. and, uh, and the negative criticism, but also the, the, the whole idea of uh, beauty pageants especially in Rwanda. Mm. Um, how did you find this whole thing when you joined the uh, beauty pageant? Uh, how, how would you describe it to someone who probably doesn't have an idea or probably has a different idea about uh, the beauty pageants? Yes. So yes, people say a lot about Miss Rwanda, but when you get to join, that is when you get to see the difference. To my I personally, Miss Rwanda is a great platform that empowers us young women. It gives us a platform to, to show people that we are capable, yeah. to show that uh, we can manage, to show that we can make an impact in the country. So I see Miss Rwanda as a, a really great platform that came, that came when we needed it. I really appreciate Miss Rwanda because it transformed me into another person that I am today. If you went back to your former school like you did, yeah. uh, Gahini? Yes, Fawai Girls School. Fawai Girls School. Mm. Um, would you actually tell the girls, like, look, Miss Rwanda, this is the platform to be. This is, if you want to, you know, to follow your dream into beauty concerts, this is the platform to be. Not only saying if I had to go back to, where I, to, to my former school, yes, I did. Yeah. I, I would like to tell this to every young woman, every young lady out, out there. Miss Rwanda is a platform that, ma that can make you make an impact, yeah. that can make you stand up, that can make you stand fast. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really good platform. I would advise any girl to take this. There you go. So let's talk about what you intend to do now. Uh, very briefly, I understand we don't have much of the time. Yeah. What would you want to achieve 
uh, at the end of your reign? So throughout this whole year, yeah. I'm basing on three things. That is saving, my project saving, encouraging saving in young people, encouraging the culture of saving in young people. Secondly, I would like to empower the youth. Yeah. I would like to empower the youth. And thirdly, I would like to deal in, with malnutrition. I would like to make a change with malnutrition. Okay, sounds great. Do you have something that you're working on currently or yes. that you're about to work on yes. in the short term? Uh, yeah. So next week on 27th, that is when we are, we are launching the project about malnutrition together with the help of Rwanda Inspiration Backup and Africa Improved Foods. Yeah. We are going to launch that on 27th in Gorero District. You're a high school graduate. Yes. Uh, very I lastly, mm. uh, do you intend to continue with your studies at some point? Definitely. Pretty much anytime soon. Still, uh, while you're still Miss Rwanda? Uh, not that sure. It would depend. It but would I'm depend. trying to study. Which course would you want to do? I'm not that sure yet, yeah. but I'm working on that. Shuti Divin Muheto, Miss Rwanda 2022. Really appreciate you joining us and, you know, presenting the news, co-anchoring the news with me. I hope you enjoyed that. How was I? Very good. Oh, very, you. very brilliant. Thank you. And uh, we hope that when your reign goes, uh, by the end of your reign, you'll be considering joining us here. All right. I will note that. <laughs> I will note it. Would you do that? Yes, I would. You Since you're, you're the one speaking, you're the bad man behind, you're the one speaking. You're always welcome. Thank you're you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much for your time indeed and Thank for you. sparing some time to speak to us. Thank you. Here on the TV. And from me and the entire news production team, uh, we want to thank you for your company tonight. I'm Ethan Tashevi and of course my guest Anke here at the Queen, uh, the Miss Rwanda 2022 Nshuti Muheto Divin. We want to thank you for your time indeed. Until next time, bye for now.